welcome to Bio 205 Microbiology at Pima Community College. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to test the effectiveness of chemical agents using the Kirby Bauer method. For this lab, the following materials are your test tube wrap, your bacteria of interest that you want to test, and a broth culture, a sterile cotton swab, your ready Bunsen burner, in this case, we're going to be working with two Petri plates. These are both what we call Mueller, Hint, and Auger. We're going to learn about these in the lab manual and what this particular media does for this lab. Forceps for sterilizing. We have a ceramic dish that we're going to apply different chemical agents to. Blank sterile discs to saturate with the chemical agents. We have a bottle of alcohol here for flaming our forceps the chemical agents we wish to test. And this is our handy antibiotic dispenser. Before you get started, you should label your Petri plates. On one plate, we're going to note chemical disinfectant. We're going to note Mueller Hinton Auger, or MHA for short, my initials, the date. We're going to incubate these at 37 degrees Celsius. In this case, we're going to be working with Escherich E. coli, so I'm going to write E. coli for short. On the second Petri plate, we're going to label the same information, but we're going to note antibiotics. Once your plates are labeled, you're ready to get started. I'm first going to perform a lawn inoculation of E. coli on both of my Petri plates. To do so, remove your sterile cotton swab. You want to make sure that you first vortex. I'm just going to gently shake the tube to dispense or disperse the bacteria in the liquid uh, broth. Remove the cap with your little finger and your dominant hand. Pass through the, uh, the flame. Dip to saturate your cotton swab. You can let it sit a few seconds. Be sure not to stick your fingers into the test tube. Rub the side of the swab on the test tube so that you can get rid of any excess droplets. Pass the opening through the flame. Place down. Pick up your first Petri plate. Rub the bacteria down the center, rotate the plate, and rub in a back and forth motion. Remember, use your hand to rotate the Petri plate. Continue to rotate as you inoculate the plate, twisting the swab in a circular motion. It's really important for this lab that the whole surface of your auger is completely coated in order to appropriately view your results later. Place down, back on your lid. At this point, you can dispose of this swab in the biohazard. If you're very certain that you've been working in close range of your Bunsen burner and that you haven't contaminated it, um, I would allow you in class to double dip. So pick up your culture, repeat the process of picking up your bacteria. If you were working with different species of bacteria, it would be crucial that you switch out the swabs. Repeat with your second Petri plate.
Remember, these go in the regular trash. We're going to dispose of the swab and our biohazard. Let's start with the antibiotic plate. This one's very simple to do. Once you had your uh, petri plate fully inoculated with your bacteria, typically, depending on how well you saturated it, you might want to let it dry just for a few minutes. Um, but essentially, bring this to your instructor, and they will help you apply the antibiotics like so. This dispenser has about seven different types of antibiotics. Each of these vials contains a different drug. We're going to learn about these again in the lab manual. Flip your plate auger side down, like so. Place your dispenser on top and push down to dispense. You should see those seven or eight antibiotic discs sit nicely on the auger. Ideally, they, not should, they should not be dug into the auger. And in some cases, your instructor can help you place them appropriately down if they don't lay flat. Each of these discs is labeled with an initial indicating the type of antibiotic. Uh, you can, if you want, use a ruler, um, or you can freehand try your best to draw lines to indicate the different zones of the different drugs. This could help you later in class during the next period when you interpret your results. But that's simple. We are done with the antibiotic. A lot of instructors, uh, it depends on the individual. Some microbiologists like to leave the petri plate um, with the lid down to avoid contamination. Sometimes on occasion these discs can fall off. So, you know, if the petri plate looks really dry, it's not terrible if the lid's on top of this lab. For our next petri plate, we're going to manually lay down our discs. We have six different chemicals that we're interested in testing. These are generally disinfectants. Some of these could be antiseptic use. But what we're going to do now that we have our lawn inoculation is we're going to manually draw our zone because we get to choose where to lay them down. We have six different chemicals that we're working with here. We're going to work with 10% bleach, betadine. Here we have 95% ethanol. Simple green, grapefruit seed oil, and tea tree oil. Notice I have already pre-labeled my ceramic dish to represent all six of those chemicals here. I'm now going to drop a couple of droplets worth of each chemical into the appropriately labeled well. The grapefruit seed extract is very viscous, so it's a little bit difficult to dispense, so I'm not going to be able to get much in here. Should be funny. You want to do your best not to cross contaminate your wells. The next thing you want to do is have the beaker or the bottle of ethanol for sterilizing our forceps ready. Remember this is very flammable, so be careful while you're working with it. 
in order to aseptically add my discs to my bacterial culture here, I'm going to flame sterilize my forceps. So I do so by dipping the tip into the alcohol, shake off any excess. And I just want to very quickly pass it through my flame. You'll notice your forceps uh, light on fire for a few seconds. You don't need to hold them here. Once the fire goes out, just let it cool for a few seconds and that should be sufficient. It's really important when you guys are working with your alcohol that you don't dip, pass it through the flame, and then invert it because the alcohol that is on fire can drip down and burn you. So when you're ready, you're going to grab a disc, dip into your first chosen chemical. You can wipe off any excess drips on the side of the ceramic dish. You don't want it soaking the petri plate. Identify on your plate the chemical. I usually put my finger over the, the spot where I want to place my disc down. And do your best to lay the disc flat and push with the forcep. You're going to repeat. Dip into the alcohol. Let it burn off the forcep. Get rid of any excess. Place your finger down on where you want to put it. Press gently into the auger. Be sure to flame one last time before putting your forceps away. Cover your alcohol, get it out of the way from the Bunsen burner. You'll see a soapy disposal replace all of your disinfectants. This is essentially what your final steps when you're done should look like. And to show you perhaps the final result, and again, we'll examine photos of this later. So after 24 hours, maybe up to 48, this is what a final result would look like. You will notice that the bacteria is growing evenly in the center of the Petri plate. You can tell that if a particular chemical agent was effective, we'll generate what's called a zone of inhibition. So notice for these two particular chemical agents up here, we see a clearing or a, a zone of dead cells 
um, present around where the chemical diffused into the auger. If the chemical agent was not effective, like this chemical agent up top that I'm pointing to here, you'll notice there's no zone of inhibition present. So we'll take a look at our data, and you guys are going to analyze this for your lab worksheet. 